and I am live. Welcome. Welcome to the Two Turtle Tom live show. You can watch this show. I do it live every Thursday night, 8 p.m. And tonight we are going to talk about some of the turtle encounters that I have had over the years. I went back into my archives I've had the uh, um, really the absolute amazing opportunity to travel all across Ohio. I'll tell you all about that, what I did for my job, and how I got to see so many really cool turtles. And this is just the uh, this is a little bit of an icing. Uh, this is just the start of what I will be doing. Um, I think we're going to do this a lot. I uh, the the importance of wild turtles is absolutely key, absolutely critical. We need turtles in the wild. And quite honestly, I focus a lot on turtles in our homes because guess what? I'm a family guy. I don't have time to do the traveling, the energy that I used to, to go see all of these amazing animals across the, the state, really. But um, they're really important. It's really important to connect with the wild relatives of the animals we keep at home and understand what the threats to their populations are over time and learn about how we can help them. So that's tonight's show. That's what we're going to do. Mikey Ben, thank you so much for joining me, Mikey Ben. Uh, live from Canada, Panther Palette is really good to see you. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, tonight we are going to chat about turtles. But first, I want to talk about the solar eclipse. And I want to know if you witnessed the solar eclipse. So let me know, did you see the amazing solar eclipse? And did were you in the totality? Or did you uh, were you a little bit out? So you still saw that shadow of the moon cover the sun um but it didn't get dark and i i I, you know it's it's absolutely crazy how intense the eclipse was i had just i had no idea it was going to be such an acute event um, in 2017, I saw the solar eclipse. It was about 90% shadowed. But man, there is so much sun that still came through. I mean, it, it got a little hazy. But if you were in the path of totality for this eclipse, I mean, it, it was a spiritual experience. And I see why people travel all around the world to see this happen. Um, so I'm going to show you a video of what it looked like in Ohio, but let me just set the picture. Um, I was at work, um, helping out. We had 1500 people there at, at the Arboretum. They bought tickets specially for this event. We had food trucks, we had cornhole and games, picnics all over the place. And then everybody just kind of stopped coming in and, Slowly, it got darker and darker and darker. And, you know, you could just see see that last little, like a half ring of sun. And then finally, that just disappeared. And the sun completely disappeared. And it got dark. It got cold. The spring peepers started to call. Um, I mean, it was it just blew my mind. It It was like it was almost dark the sun was gone you could see around all the horizon you could see what looked like sunset so it was kind of like a 365 degree sunset um so i'm gonna try something new tonight and that's share this video and i think if i have this uh on properly let me just try let me just try that let me just make sure i'm doing this right i'm gonna share my screen and I am going to also share the audio. And so I, if you saw this video, but I will tell you, not many people did. Um, I, I went live at the moment of totality. Not 
too many people uh, have seen this video. So let me just rewind it and hopefully you can hear the audio. Let's give it a play. Interestingly, I can't hear the audio, but I hope you can. I mean, it it just it it blew the mind. It that is the sun, but it looked like the moon. But of course, we are looking at the moon. It's just dark in China. Right at the end, listen for the spring people. So let me know if you can hear the audio. Say I can hear the audio in the chat. Hey, Sebastian, welcome. We're talking about the eclipse. Let me know if you experienced it. Oh, we got some fishing videos. So that was it. The eclipse, it was awesome. Uh, and tonight we are going to talk about turtles. Um, let me just set the stage uh, from... 2003 to roughly 2021, I was an employee of the resource agency here in Ohio, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. And so I got to travel all around the state. My pr primary job was being a botanist for the state, but we also documented lots of other interesting animals and species. And then for a time, I lived by a river called the Olentangy River. And if you have ever watched an Ohio State football game, sometimes they'll talk about the Olentangy River. I lived about, I don't know, five miles upstream of, uh, of Ohio State. And so there's a lot of pictures in here from the Olentangy River but also stuff around Ohio. So we're going to take a look at the turtle fauna of Ohio and look at the species that I have photographed over the years. Uh, and so let, let me know if, do you go out and look for turtles um, at all? How do you connect uh, with the turtles and, and tortoises in your neck of the woods or lizards? Do you go herping? But let's start off with, this guy. Pretty cool, huh? This is an eastern box turtle. Um, eastern box turtles live in the hill country of Ohio. Uh, for whatever reason, they're no longer found in northeast Ohio. Maybe they were there at one time, but honestly, it's probably too cold and too snowy for them in Northeast Ohio, where I live. Oh, Mike Chance here. Hey, Mike. Um, and so, Mike, tonight we're going to look at some of the turtles I have found. And so the Eastern Box Turtle, if you're not familiar with it, it is also called the Woodland Box Turtle. The Woodland Box Turtle is all the different subspecies, but they're kind of like the hingeback equivalent in North America, although they are turtles. They are actually turtles. A lot of people call them tortoises but they don't have the bone structure that a true tortoise has. So they're more closely related to painted turtles than they are a tortoise. Um, this is one of those beautifully spectacular males that is a target for poaching. Um, unfortunately, these animals are really popular in Asia. And, you know, we are almost to a point where we have our own turtle crisis here in North America um, with these animals being poached, plucked out of the wild. They're still fairly common in the Appalachian region, and that's the area of Ohio that they are common. Um, it's a male. The bright eye, the bright red eye is a really good indicator that it is a male. And just the overall coloration, this is a classic male. Uh, sometimes you'll see the animals where their shells are completely worn smooth. Um, this one, you start to see some of that wear and erosion, but it's still there. So this is probably 
uh, an animal that is it's mature it's lived a long time but it's not ancient um mikey ben says for me i lose my mind every time i encounter a sea turtle in the wild while snorkeling i don't do much herping at home um tell us where you snorkel for sea turtles mike uh that's that's awesome i'm gonna go megan and i are actually going on a cruise to the caribbean and uh Hope to see some sea turtles down there. So, um, West West Coleman says the turtles just come to my house. It's nice. We have a good population of Easterns that live in the neighborhood. That's awesome, you know. And and so people that are from these areas uh, historically, oh Curacao, very nice, Mike. Um, people that come, you know, people that live with these populations of turtles. They know they're a part of their life and they have been for generations. You know, maybe their parents lived on the same property and that that same turtle lived on that property. Um, it's the people that come from far away, maybe to vacation. They go for a hike in one of our state parks and they see one of these beautiful animals and they say, you know what? I think I would really like to take that home as a pet. And I, I'm guilty. I did this. When I was 12, we went to Salt Fork State Park. I was riding my bike with my friend Brad up this giant hill. I looked to my right. There was this beautiful box turtle right in the state park, and I took it home. That was bad. But that's what happens. And, you know, we have two kind of, kinds of poaching that really happen and occur with our native turtles. One is this systematic, you know, one person pays another person or a group of people a bunch of money to go round up tons of box turtles. And, you know, if you know when these comes out, come out, you can drive around on roads and find them all over the place. And those are the turtles that get shipped off and, and sold to Asia. If they are intercepted, there's this amazing program called the SAFE program, of which the American Zoological Association and the Turtle Survival Alliance uh, kind of co-coordinate. And the goal there is to get these confiscated turtles, just like this one, box turtle that was meant to go to Asia, but was caught somehow, maybe in an airport, and... These safer institutions like Chris Manis's uh, Dalton State College uh, can take in the turtles and acclimate them. They, they can actually do DNA work to see where they might have come from so that they can put them back in the wild in the right place and ensure that they don't have any diseases. So that is one of the most beautiful male box turtles. You can see he's in a grassland. He was in a meadow habitat. This is Yarrow here. And it was kind of an overcast day. And I'm bet I bet this turtle was, you know, just browsing around looking for bugs, but also strawberries. This was spring. It was down in Adams County. I was on a botany trip with about 15 other people. And then towards the end of the day, we saw this beautiful male box turtle walking around in in this forest and that land was former agricultural land it, it it was ohio's tobacco country so there were these really old tobacco barns and then uh these old fields where they used to grow tobacco but probably haven't done for a long long time probably took this picture around 2005 or so that kind of kind of dates me Let's look at another turtle or turtles. Let's see what we've got next. Let me unzoom here. There we go. We'll go to the next one. Let's see what we got. Just got to manipulate this to get to the next turtle here. Or maybe, let's see. I thought I'd be able to just leaf through here. But just a second here. Let me take a look and see how I can easily get to the next one. Um, let me go here. Um, yeah, so how's your week going, guys? I'm ready for it to be over. 
I am ready for the week to be over. Um, but I'm excited to show you these photos of the turtles. Um, for sure. Let me just sort by date. And then let's do that one more time. Okay, next one. Um, super cool turtle. Now we're back in Columbus. The Olentangy River dumps into what's called the Scioto River. And if, if you've seen a river in Ohio called, it, it's spelled S-C-I-O-T-O. -O. It looks like Scioto, but we say Scioto River. Um, oh, Jennifer A says, very busy state testing for the kids. And in Ohio, I heard our computer systems went down. So uh, that was pretty nuts. Um, this is the northern map turtle. And this was a gargantuan female. I mean, she was probably 15 inches carapace length. Uh, I was right in downtown Columbus for an arts festival. And behind me is just a zoo of people, like 10,000 people and all of these art vendors. And I just looked down into the river. The river is much more natural now, but at that time there was this big wall and you could point camera straight down and bam right there was this gorgeous female map turtle and what's so fascinating about the map turtles um, is that the males are so much bigger than the females i mean they are huge uh i mean i i said that the wrong way the the males are so much smaller than the females so that animal on the left could be a juvenile uh, but it, it it's pretty close to an adult male. Uh, so, I mean, isn't that ridiculous looking? We'll, we'll, we'll look at some other painted, uh, or, or some, sorry, some other map turtles. But, um, I mean, map turtles are, it's just comical how big the females are compared to the males. Um, and then the other really interesting thing about map turtles is that they are, River turtles. Uh, let's see here. Mickey says hello. Mickey, welcome. Uh, this show's all about turtles, and tonight I'm just sharing some turtle encounters that I've had over the over the years. And the thing to know about these big map turtles is that they are river turtles. So I never understood why, when I was a little kid, I could not find map turtles. Well, there's probably a couple of reasons, but I was mo mostly looking in ponds and you don't find map turtles in ponds. You find them in rivers. They have these giant, strong jaws that are for crushing hard snail shells and mussel shells. Um, Mickey says uh, that she has a pet turtle and she's from Pennsylvania. Mickey, tell us. Do you know what type of pet turtle you have? Let us know. And if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Uh, how's that pet turtle doing? Um, but yeah, isn't that nuts? And, and so also northern map turtles, the rivers of northeast Ohio, especially the Cuyahoga River, which you may have heard of, that is the famous river that caught on fire and goes right through downtown Cleveland. It also goes about three miles from where I sit. And, uh, and if I could, got on the river and was a crazy person to go through rapids, I could canoe to Cleveland or kayak uh, to Cleveland. Um, but that river was just so industrialized and polluted that there were no map turtles there. But just like last summer, a local photographer who photographs in downtown Cleveland in the Cuyahoga, and he, he's there, he's been there like every summer, all the time. He lives nearby. He'd never seen a map turtle in the Cuyahoga River. And slowly but surely, these dams have been coming down. The water's been getting cleaner. And finally, 
uh, he spotted a map turtle, a northern map turtle in downtown Cleveland where they hadn't been seen for decades. So that's a turtle conservation success story. And it's all because of the Clean Water Act. And the Clean Water Act is a major act. And it, it, it doesn't talk about turtles. But guess what? The Clean Water Act protects turtles and their habitats. So millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars have been spent enforcing the Clean Water Act, which has directly benefited all the riverine turtles in this country. And so there is a lot of turtle conservation that happens in this country just by keeping our rivers safe and clean and unpolluted. That's really important for us to understand. And we can we can create more northern map turtles, but man, isn't it so much cooler to see a turtle in the wild? I mean, that's where my passion lies. Okay, let's see what we've got next. Bring up, let's, oh, I, there we go. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here are two pancakes. Pancake tortoises, right? And not pancake tortoises. Um, these are soft shell turtles. Uh, Mickey, uh, let's see here. Mikey Ben says, all I ever could find in our parks as a kid were sliders. Yep. And I'm going to show you some of those. And and those, Mikey lives in Canada. Most definitely they are not found in Canada. Uh, natively, the red-eared slider. Uh, Mickey says, I'm 20, but I just don't feel comfortable with people uh, with my real name. So just call me Mickey or my nickname, Jules. I'm happy I'm here. I love turtles and wild turtles matter. That's right. That is the theme of tonight. Um so Panther Palette, they they these look like a pancake tortoise, right? But no, they they are soft shell turtles. Uh, looks like aquarium uh, aquariums, animals, and me has joined us. So uh, welcome, uh, welcome to the show. I'm Two Turtle Tom. We do the live show every Thursday night at eight o'clock, and tonight I'm talking about some turtle encounters that I've had. So what we have here are two eastern spiny soft shell turtles. They're probably males, although they could be juvenile females, and they are living in the Olentangy River. Um, they they look like pancakes, and that would be a great name for them. In fact, I think they look more like pancakes than a pancake tortoise looks like a pancake. Uh, but, I mean, the, what's so cool about softshell turtles, number one, they're ancient. You know, you can find softshell turtles on... Um, in most of the world, except South America. Uh, and I don't think they occur in Australia either. But Asia, Africa, North America, all have soft shell turtles. And it, they're, they are also riverine turtles. You have to be near a river to find the eastern spiny soft shell turtle. If you see them like in a pond or something like that, that means that they were put there. Um, in the spring is the time to see the spiny soft shells bask. So like right now, when it gets about 70 degrees, that's when they'll come out and bask. Once it really warms up in the summer, then they don't bask as much. So Wendy um, has, uh, who lives in Florida, they have the Florida soft shell down there. And I've definitely had encounters with Florida soft shells. They literally are huge. The females get like that big. They are humongous animals. Um, what Wendy also says, last year she picked up a big soft shell in the middle of the road. I was so glad it didn't bite me. They can be spicy. Yes, they have these really long necks, which they can use to sit on the bottom of a shallow river and then kind of stick their neck in that long tubular nose. Uh, and, and only the tip of their nose uh, is above the water and they can breathe. It's kind of like a snorkel. Um, oh, aquarium, aquariums, animals and me says I'm in New Zealand. 
And there are no native turtles in New Zealand, I don't believe, but there are tuatara, which are darn cool. Um, the other thing about softshell turtles, they tend to be a game species. And so that means people can trap them for food. Um, it's not a real common practice, but um, in Ohio, you can keep a pet softshell turtle if you have a fishing license. Um, the problem with with unregulated, a lot of these game turtles don't have limits. Like th there's no there's nothing that says like you as a person with a fishing license can get five turtles a year um, or, or a day. There's no limits. And so it doesn't take more than one person who just really heavily fishes a river to put a, a serious dent into some of these uh, native game turtle species. So um, I love them. They're super cool. I did have one as a pet once and they're, they're great females get big Eastern spiny soft shell turtle females. They're the ones that lay the eggs, the bigger, the more eggs they can lay. Uh, whereas the males stay a more manageable size, like 10 inches, maybe 12 inches for a male, but the, the females can get quite a bit bigger than that. Okay. Let's see the next photo. What, what do we have next? Let's check. Oh, okay. Here we have another Eastern box turtle. Uh, this is from Davis. Well, I shouldn't say exactly where it is from, but it's, it's from uh, Northern Adams County. Um, Panther palette. So the, I don't know specifically how long the soft shelled turtles live, but they grow fast and, you know, they're probably not as long lived as the hard shelled turtles, but I, I've, that's just pure spec speculation. Uh, Wes Coleman says, I had a spot in Lake Altoona. I could always f find spiny hatchlings as a kid. Oh, man, they're they're so cute. It's it's tempting. Some people breed them. You'll see them on dealers price lists every once in a while. They're really cool, but they're river turtles. They're designed to swim fast in rivers in, in big spaces. So it's really challenging to keep soft shell turtles as pets. And, you know, quite frankly, that's why you don't see them a lot as pets. So here is a female box turtle, also from Southern Ohio, Adams County, same county, actually, the northern section. This is a female, much more drab in coloration. Uh, you know, the, the males definitely are trying to get the female's attention. It's not the other way around. But these females are always just so sweet. Um, the trick is to... Take your picture of the turtle before they really know you're there. Um, now, she knows I'm there, but I'm far away. And uh, that's a telephoto lens. I use a flash to light it up. Once you get close to these wild turtles, they will close that box. And they won't come out. If you have a turtle that isn't really uh, closing up much, that's a good sign that it might have had uh, some experience as a pet. Um, Mickey asks, or Mikey, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to say Mickey. Yeah, have you ever seen a Mississippi mud turtle in the wilderness? So mud, mud turtles and musk turtles, they are somewhat uh, nocturnal, if not nocturnal. Um, and they don't bask frequently. So they are really hard to find. Um, now, where I live in Ohio, we don't have uh, any Mississippi mud turtles. In fact, we don't have eastern mud turtles. The only sternotherid uh, turtle or, or kinosterid turtle, which is the mud and musk turtles, that we have is the stink pot. And I will see them occasionally walking on the bottom of ponds and things like that. And... During my high school, herp or not my high school, my college herpetology field trip uh, to a uh, to a place called Shawnee State Park, we used nets and we actually caught uh, a few uh, 
Eastern Sting Pass. So they're pretty cool. But this, yep, this is the female Eastern Fox Turtle. Much more drab. You can see why this animal would not bring as much in Asia as those stunningly beautiful Oh, Muddy. I like that name, Mickey. That is a good name. Okay, the next picture is the ubiquitous red-eared slider. This animal is, is from a small, relatively small range in the southeastern U U.S. that actually includes Ohio. Believe it or not, they're the northernmost native populations of red-eared sliders were thought to occur in wetlands along the Scioto River south of Columbus between Chillicothe, Ohio, and Columbus. But this is the animal that became a worldwide pet. Um, they were chosen by farmers in Louisiana, and there used to be dozens and dozens of turtle farms in Louisiana that would breed this species for the American pet trade and uh, before 1973, you could pretty much walk into any store in the country and find a baby turtle. It was a rite of passage to buy your kid a little baby turtle. And what happened? Those turtles were released and some kids got sick with salmonella bacteria poisoning. So in 1973, the United States government... <laughs> outlawed the sale of baby turtles and specifically they outlawed the sale of turtles under four inches uh what we call carapace length so that is the length from the front of their carapace to the back of their carapace uh why did they pick four inches does anybody know why they picked four inches above four inches you can still legally sell turtles as pets under four inches, you cannot. Um, does anybody know why they picked four inches? Let me know. And um, you know, a lot of our hardcore turtle people know this, but and quite frankly, some people think the reason is absurd. And quite frankly, it probably is absurd. But you had to draw the line somewhere, and they didn't want to completely ban the sale of these turtles. But I will tell you when. Baby turtle, when the sale of um, when the sale of baby turtles were banned, guess what happened? Those Louisiana turtle farms started shipping the turtles all over the world because they could be legally exported. So I I really do think. And it probably would have happened anyways, but the four-inch turtle ban caused the worldwide distribution of the red-eared slider, and it became invasive. So there is a very specific reason why they chose four inches. It has to do with salmonella bacteria. But I, I will tell you, a turtle over four inches has just as much salmonella bacteria on it per per part of its skin or shell than a, a turtle under four inches. And so this is, it's kind of an absurd thing. Now in Canada, um, oh, it's, a, it's absolutely tortoises too, Wendy. It is absolutely tortoises too. Um, you cannot sell colonians under four inches as pets. Now, there is an exemption. It, it, the law says for bona fide scientific and education purposes, and many, many people stretch that exemption. And to the point now, if you walk into a locally owned pet store in Ohio, you will uh, find baby turtles. And it's kind of it, it the, the law is not being enforced. The Food and Drug Administration needs to enforce it. Um, it's it's just getting a little ridiculous that every store I walk into is selling baby turtles. Um, Wendy says, I know it's at the shows, the tiny tortoises say for educational purposes. And 
the the water turtle should say that too um but i know shows like tinley park do enforce that rule um but if you read the rule it's turtles and tortoises they don't make a distinction the red ear slider was my second pet turtle it was the first pet turtle that i got from a pet store and uh, it didn't live very long i the water i kept it too cool uh, you know, I, I had only an under gravel filter, you know, can you imagine <laughs> how dirty that water got? And, um, it didn't live very long. So, um, most people release them as they got old, you know, females can get really big. You're talking like 125 gallon aquarium to really house a decent sized red eared slider. Um, so if you ever want an aquatic turtle, please go to your local turtle rescue, like the little rescue in the, the Toronto area or the Herps Alive Foundation in the Cleveland area, and you will see uh, literally hundreds of these animals that just got too big and unruly for their owners to take care of. Um, anybody want to guess what state and city I photographed this in? It's a rather famous city uh it's in the u.s it's in the continental u.s and i tell you if this turtle can make it there that's your hint so what where do you think i photographed this turtle and i mean it's kind of funny because this turtle can make it there it's it's clearly doing great living its best life um, in a place that's very hard to live if you're a person or a turtle. Um, so any guesses? Any guesses? Did you get my hint? What city and state did I take this photograph in? If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. New York City, guys. This animal was in a pond in Morningside Heights Park, which is right near Columbia University. Concrete bottom pond, living its best life and looking awesome. That's probably a male, actually. You see how long the fingernails are? That's a good indication that that is a male. Okay. Ah, my favorite turtle, the Midland Painted Turtle. Um, this was actually on the offices of ODNR. We had a little educational pond um, that was uh, created, um, and it had a population of painted turtles. I have a feeling that our um, someone from ODNR probably uh, seeded the pond with painted turtles, but who knows? Maybe they got there naturally. I mean, the, the pond did drain to natural streams, um, but there weren't, you know, they, they were pretty successful. So we would see a lot of little baby turtles and, um, the, the Midland painted turtle is the, the painted turtle of, um, Ohio. Excuse me. I mean, if, if you come to Ohio and see any turtle, it's going to be a classic Midland painted turtle. You go over to like Illinois or Western Indiana, they start to get, uh, wonky looking um wendy says i'm always amazed at the turtles that end up in retention ponds here fully enclosed in concrete yeah yeah i mean hey if they can live in a 20 gallon aquarium a, a concrete bottom retention pond is like a palace for them uh after living in a in a, in a tank so um but the midland painted turtles one thing so the difference between the Midland Painted Turtle and the Eastern Painted Turtle is really interesting because they look almost identical. I mean, if you just look at their head and their patterns on their legs and skin and stuff like that. Okay, Maggie, no problem. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, keep watching on the TV. Um, all, the, all of this is like basically identical. But when you look at the scoot pattern, um, you can see how the vertebral scoots and what I believe are the costal scoots, they alternate. Um, so you see how 
there's a vertebral and then two costals and then a vertebral. Um, the eastern painted turtle, these are lined up like this. And this is more kind of squared off. The other difference, if you flipped this guy on his belly, there would be a nice uh, irregular oval blob, very dark, in the center of his carapace. Um, it's not going to have any coloration like a Western painted turtle. Um, it'll just be kind of a, it might have a tinge of red here or there. But man, I, I just have to ask myself, what if the Eastern painted turtle or Midland painted turtle would have been the red eared slider? What if they would have selected that one? Would we hate this turtle? I don't know. Would it have become invasive everywhere? Hard to say. Hard to say. I, I still love red eared sliders. If you have red eared sliders, like we need to thank you. They're amazing animals. Um, and more people need to care for them because they're just filling the shelters. So. Okay, anybody recognize this guy? We saw it before, but this is a really rare sight to see in the wild. This is a wild turtle. Um, this was also at Shawnee State Park. Um, that person holding the box turtle, her name is Jenny, and I just gave it away. Um, this is a baby eastern box turtle. It's probably a year old. Um, this was taken in like June, and it probably hatched. Uh, you know, a, a year uh, and six months previous to that. Um, but this this is like a holy grail find. Um, these guys are so small. They hide. They're so well camouflaged when they're small like this. You know, they don't have that bright coloration yet at all. Um, so it's really rare to find. these things. Unfortunately, here in Ohio, we have so many raccoons and skunks and possums because they eat people's garbage we have more than ever and they just wreak havoc on turtle populations unfortunately they're native animals but they're just living out of balance with the ecosystem so jennifer says she loves the red to cream uh, stripes on that painted turtle yeah isn't that awesome how they just like at one end of the turtle they're bright red and the other yellow uh it's a kind of cream color uh, box turtles are are a listed species in ohio they're not uh, endangered or threatened um they're kind of a species of concern um and they're still uh just a, a killer find um gotta love finding baby turtles in the wild um this is a baby map turtle a teeny teeny tiny one Let's look at him a little bit more closely. You can see this is an animal that hatched the previous year, uh, most likely, and it hasn't grown at all, really. Um, just a, you can see a little bit of growth here. Um, but when you see the smooth shell, uh, it kind of um, bumpy a little bit without many growth lines. That's how you know that's a, a, a young turtle. Um, I was actually fishing when I took this photo. Uh, I always have the camera around my neck. I mean, again, this was 17 years ago I took this photo, uh, but it was in Columbus. It was on the Olentangy River. And yeah, I was just casting in the water below and all of a sudden this little baby map turtle popped up. And oh my gosh, that, that was just so, so cool. Um, Jennifer says, love seeing the baby maps like pebbles on rocks when canoeing. And yeah, so if you want to see river turtles, that is the way to see them uh, is to go canoeing. Because whatever, for whatever reason, they don't recognize the canoe as a threat nearly as much as a person walking along the bank. Now, they'll eventually notice you and realize that you're not something uh normal in their habitat but um you can get pretty close to basking turtles in rivers with canoes and kayaks and it's super cool okay let's see what we've got next 
Ooh, okay. This is an awesome turtle. Uh, this was a lifer. Um, and I do believe this is the only observation of this species in the wild that I've made. Um, this is in a Great Lakes wetland in the western basin of Lake Erie. There's a lot of wetlands there, so I'm not giving out much. And that's one of the strongholds of this species. Uh, does anybody recognize it or know what this turtle might be any guesses any guesses it kind of looks like a, 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 a helmet you know it's so so domed oh yeah uh jennifer recognizes it this is a blandings turtle and um it used to be emidoidia i don't know what the genus is now is it glitemis or um, let's look let's look that up um, it is, let's see, it is still, well, Wikipedia says it's still Emidoidia. Um, this turtle is actually closer, more closely related to the pond turtles in Europe, uh, the European pond turtle, than it is to, uh, our other turtles that we have in Ohio. Um, they're big. Uh, you you can identify them by their bright yellow chin, which you can't really see in this picture because I had just a point and shoot and it was like a 2007 era point and shoot. Um, but yeah, I, I got to go all around the state in, I mean, just dozens and dozens of different habitats with lots of cool plants and animals. And that was my job. It was awesome. It The pay sucked. <laughs> but. Uh, I was rewarded with a lifetime of experiences. There's one more turtle here. I think that is, uh, whoop, sorry, you can't see. I believe that is just a little painted turtle right there. So who spotted that one? But the Blandis turtle, it's a rare turtle in Ohio. We can own them if they're captive bred. And um, that's kind of cool. You know, we can own spotted turtles. We can own Blandis turtles. Um, we can also own wood turtles because wood turtles are not native to Ohio. Even if they were, we could own captive bred ones. Um, now here is a little bit older. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just more a little more rough than that other one we saw. But this is one of those classic, beautiful uh, box turtles. He knew we were there, so he uh, kind of partially closed up. And if we would have tried to pick him up, that shell would have instantly moved and moved uh, and closed him off totally. But a um, little bit more weathering than the other animal. Um, in in general, when you have these wild turtles, um, this represents a year of growth. That represents a year of growth. And as the turtle gets older, they sort of slow down. But they can also, you know, in good years, they can put two possible growth uh, ring. So it's totally unreliable. You can't tell the age of a turtle. You can just kind of guesstimate some things about how old it could be ballpark. But if we were to sit here and count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, it's probably much older than 16. You can see it's got some battle scars, but overall, this one's pretty good looking. You know, no major cracks, uh, no, you know, scoots gnawed off or anything like that. That's a pretty common occurrence. Um, so, yeah, that is another Eastern box turtle. Let's go to the next one. Oh, yeah, here's kind of a cool photo. There are four, no, four or three. Let's count them. Several different species on here. This is also the Olentangy River, just a few minutes walk uh, at the end of the street from my parents, or, or actually my house when I lived there with Megan. Um, so we have a gigantic female softshell turtle. Um, right next to her is a pretty good size snapping turtle. And then next to the snapping turtle is a gigantic 
uh, red eared slider, non native. Uh, and then we have several map turtles uh, on that log uh, of different sizes and, and different ages. Um, you know, that one could be a boy, that one could be the girl. Um, it, it could be also this one is a juvenile female, um, but they're they're quite different sizes. And, um, you know, this was just like a giant floating log on the edge of the river in some deep water. It's rare to see snapping turtles bask, but they do bask, especially early in the season. This photo was from quite early in the year. Um, unfortunately, this was with one of the crappier telephoto lenses I had in the late 2000s, um, but still a really cool photo. Um, one of my favorites, uh, one of my favorite turtle encounters that I've had. Here's another one. Again, these um, red-eared sliders looking mighty regal. Um, there's just something great about them. And, you know, I think that's why they've been so popular. Um, they're pretty turtles. Um, there's, there's, they just have uh, a certain something about them. And, um, while they're not native here in the Olentangy river, um, they were considered native just 30 or 40 miles South of here. Um, these are either pets, released pets or the children of released pets. And it kind of looks like that one's a male. That one's Probably, yeah. See how, see how different their fingernails are compared to the size of their foot? Their shorter fingernails. And you see how long those fingernails go? Male. Female. And then actually this one, you can kind of see how it looks like there's like plastic kind of peeling off. Well, aquatic turtles will shed that outer layer of keratin. Uh, they do that to rid themselves of any algae that's attached to their shell. So pretty darn cool. Again, Olentangy River. Another one, you can see the uh, map common map turtle on the left. That looks like a big female. Also notice the very short fingernails on her look at that massive jaw that's for eating freshwater clams and mussels and snails um and then uh she's got a big red-eared slider or not a huge one probably a male but um you know that spot could be taken up by a native map turtle um, so it's just uh Super cool. Oh, Eliza Ann is here. Eliza, we're looking at turtles. Uh, this is a northern map turtle and red-eared sliders from uh, the Olentangy River in Columbus. Um, that's where Megan and I used to live. When we first got married, uh, it was an incredible place to live. We were just literally like a minute's walk from this park and a river, and I could go down there and fish and take pictures of turtles. Um, and then Eliza Ann... I also was a biologist for the state of Ohio, and I got to go to lots and lots of cool places and see all kinds of turtles. Uh, so I, we are getting towards the end of, of the list, but man, this is one of my favorites. This is when iPhones and iPods were starting to get popular. So we're like, we're talking, I think I took this in about 2011. And so during that time, it was kind of a dark uh, time in my life. Um, I had basically, you know, during after the Great Recession, government was in disarray and there was no money. And so they said, Tom, we want you to go work for the Division of Wildlife and, and be a wildlife research technician. Um, now, I got to look at a lot and do a lot of projects that didn't involve game animals. But state wildlife agencies back then, in, in you know, 15 years ago, they're better than they were. Um, but because they're funded by hunting primarily and fishing, you know, the emphasis really was on the huntable animals. So I was here at this site doing surveys for actually grassland birds 
things like Henslow sparrows and bobolinks, dick sizzles, northern harriers, uh, savannah, or uh, not savannah sparrows, uh, grasshopper sparrows, and eastern bluebirds. And this was in the heart of Appalachia, but it was in an area that been, had been heavily strip mined. <laughs> Eliza says, love me a Darth Maul eyeball. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can see why people want a turtle like this in Asia. It It's perfectly grown shell. It's beautiful coloration. It's hard to grow them up in our homes and have them look like this. And this is why these things are being poached from the wild to sell overseas in the international pet trade. They often go to Hong Kong and then get distributed from there. Or why someone like me from Cleveland or Akron, you know, goes down into the hill country of Ohio on a camping trip, finds a box turtle, brings it home. They make horrible pets. They're a turtle that's lived in the same spot, you know, maybe the same square mile for 50 or 80 years. You put them in a box. That is not a good life for them at all but you know i was just driving down the road here uh i think i was probably done with my bird surveys for the day and i was probably heading to start doing vegetation plots and you'll see this uh guardrail there there was a stream along here and box turtles love to live near streams they're gonna hunt in the stream possibly they're going to find things washed up that they can eat along the stream and they're going to drink water along the stream um, and the other thing about box turtles you know they love to come out after a good rain so if you had a nice overnight rain in the summer and then the next morning is clear but everything is still moist and nice and humid and damp that is the time to be on the lookout for box turtles when you're cruising down the roads of Ohio, of Southeast Ohio and, and Southern Ohio. Here's another really cool photo. This photo, um, the authors of the Reptiles of Ohio book actually reached out to me and asked if they could use this in the Reptiles of Ohio book. And uh, I'm just looking at my bookshelf. I don't think I have it, but. Uh, yeah, it made it, um, and it's the Eastern Spiny Softshell, a map turtle, and a Midland Painted Turtle. Uh, and then, yeah, look at that transition from yellow to red. And it, it, it's sort of mesmerizing, because it just sort of happens. And like, I mean, I guess the transition is right there, but uh, it's, it's subtle, <laughs> and I love these guys. Uh, Eastern spiny softshell, those are named for this row of tubercles on the front rim of the carapace. Uh, that is distinctive of the Eastern spiny softshell and the other spiny softshells that live. Uh, there's other subspecies. The smooth softshell, which is the other river softshell that we have here in the Midwest, does not have these tubercles. And that is why it is called the smooth soft shell let's see i think we're almost done yep we are we are we are towards the end of the slideshow so let me yep yep so the the message here is that yes we love turtles and pet turtles are awesome but seeing Real live turtles in the wild is so cool. It is 10 times better than seeing a pet turtle in a zoo. I mean, I love turtles anywhere, but this just magical moment when your path crosses a turtle's path, when you're exploring nature is just so awesome. And it is, it's a, an it, you can't duplicate that experience in your home as a pet. And so, Let's have pet turtles, but let's also really work hard to support turtles in the wild. Even turtles here in the United States are threatened from poaching, those box turtles. The, the people that live in Asia, they covet 
these turtles. So we just we need to keep them uh, in the wild. Yes, it's good for us to have assurance colonies to back up those populations, but we also need them doing great in the wild too. Uh, Eliza says, soft shells are so interesting. They're incredibly interesting, Eliza. They're really difficult to keep as pets because they get big. Uh, the, the kind of smallish soft shell is the Chinese soft shell, and they're often available as albinos. And there's some videos about Logan Paul and his albino soft shell. So check those out after we're done here, of course. Um, and Wendy says, I'm hoping to see go gophers soon that we're getting high. It's magical seeing them. So, uh, or uh, yeah, that's what Wendy said. Um, I love the gopher tortoises, Wendy. Um, when I do my next show, I'm going to take a look at turtles that I've seen outside of Ohio and gopher tortoises are high on that list. What's so cool about gopher tortoises in Florida, like if you know where to go to see them, you will see them um, for lots of different reasons. But I, I think like yesterday or today was gopher tortoise day. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, Panther Palette says, I'm so glad I could stay the whole time. I really enjoy learning about these wonderful creatures. Uh, thank you so much, Panther Palette. Uh, I really uh, enjoyed talking about them. And I love turtles. I love keeping them as pets, but I also love them in the wild. And yeah, just supporting groups and organizations that can serve turtles, like the Turtle Survival Alliance and the Turtle Conservancy. Uh, are ways that we can give back as pet owners uh, for the impacts the pet trade has had on native reptiles and particularly turtles and tortoises. Um, yeah, Wendy says they don't care about people walking by at all. They just keep eating. I mean, uh, I, I remember, and I'll share a picture of it someday, but I was uh, at uh, Honeymoon Island State Park and just kind of cruising around the far east area or far north area. Um, Man, I encountered a, a, a grazing gopher tortoise, and it was a big one. And it just like was like bobbing its head, munch, 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 walking straight down the path. I mean, it was like a lawnmower, uh, just chomping the grass. It was it was pretty cool. So, well, everyone, I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's fun growing this community of of uh, conscientious uh, reptile keepers. Um, love the chameleons. I see Bill Strand is going to be doing a helmeted chameleon video. That's tomorrow at 8 Eastern. And I sent him some photos of my two helmeted chameleons uh, uh, to, um, to be a part of that. And um, so next week, we have a awesome, awesome guest. Um, at least that tentatively, I got to confirm it with Will, but Will Espenshade will be my co-host next week. Uh, Will is from Capodolo Farms again, and, uh, he sells tortoise food and is one of the leading tortoise, uh, care, uh, thought leaders, uh, in the country. And, uh, he's going to be joining me and Sushmita Carr will be our guest. Sushmita works for and lives in India, and she works for the TSA India. So she is going to uh, be my guest, and we're going to talk about what it's like, uh, what 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 turtle conservation in India is all about. Um, we're going to learn about turtle ownership in India. Is is what's the culture around turtles and tortoises? And then talk about how she got to be uh, a turtle conservationist. Um, she is doing amazing work in India. And India has these like absolutely incredible turtle and tortoise species. So uh, I will be putting an announcement out pretty early for that. Once I confirm the final details, look for a Facebook event link. And uh, yeah, we're going to really dive in uh, to the turtles and tortoises of India uh, just uh, one week from tonight, the 18th. So 
thanks again. Uh, thank you, friends. I really appreciate you joining me. I'll try to do some impromptu lives, just uh, hanging out with the animals this weekend. If you catch it, wonderful. If you can't catch it, no worries at all. Thank you for joining me. Uh, have a great weekend, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much. <laughs>